All right, so today we're gonna go over lesson three from unit one, which is a lot like lesson two, um, which where we uh, interpreted functions, uh, function notation, but we're gonna do it in the real world. So our goal is gonna be evaluate functions uh, in with a specific input in a specific domain. Uh, we're going to interpret it, but we're going to do it in a real-world context. Um, real-world context, that's the only difference. <coughs> but let's warm up with uh, kind of a, a fun way to do the review. We're going to build our own functions, okay? So it's saying, hey, um, we're going to do two ways to make this, two ways to make this, a function equal 26. We're going to build a function uh, two ways using digits 1 to 9, um, 1 each at most. Okay, so those are the rules. Okay, so I kind of laid it out here what it's going to look like. Okay, so this is kind of be like a different format of how it would look. Okay, so, so, um, g sub x, you could also call this y, right? Remember, g sub x is also y, okay? Right? It also equals that. So just not confuse yourself, okay? So g sub x, remember, y equals g sub x. y is a function of g sub x, okay? So anyway, we need to make an equation up like this. That would equal 26. We need to do two of them, actually. So let's do the first one. All right, so g, let's do a g sub x. g sub of some value of x. We're going to some value of x. We need to make it equal 26. Equals 26 minus some value of c equals... 26. So let's pick our x value first. So let's get a, a nice round number that would uh, be something. It's got to be bigger than 26 when we're done, right? Um, so let's do let's do like a how about a, a five times. Well, it's got to be even, right? Well, I guess it doesn't have to be even. So five times six is 30. Okay, so let's do, if we had g, so if g of 5, g sub 5 would be 30, right? So I need to make g, I need to make g f, uh, 5, I need to multiply it by 6 to make it 30, okay? Oh, that should be blue, wrong color. G sub 5, whoops, I was skipping ahead of myself. This should be x, g sub x, 6, g sub x equals 6x, six this should be the second line, 6x. So that's going to be, so this will be 6 equals 6 times 5, 6 times which is 30. And this is going to be 30. We'll just make this green. This is going to be 30 minus, minus. Okay, so what do I need to make? I need to subtract. Okay, so that's going to be 4. Alright, so minus 4 to make it 26. Equals, equals 26. 26. So that's my first one. Alright, cool. Let's do another one. G sub x equals something equals 26. So it has to be bigger than 26 again, right? So let's do, uh, let's pick a number. Let's do 8, right? How about 8 times 4? That's 32, okay? Um, so let's do G, G sub 4. Alright, so let's do, it was 8, so 
8 was my a 8 of x right so if 8 times 4 right that was 32 what do I need to subtract Let's see 32 minus 26 well that's 6 minus 6 equals 26. And those are my equations. Those are my functions that would, uh, would meet all the requirements up here. Let's go up and make sure that they're all, they meet the requirements. Okay, they're not the same numbers. Okay, they're not greater than 9. All right, meets all the requirements. That was a good warm-up. Now let's move on to the actual lesson. All right. So we're going to recall that functions allow, we're going to look at this one over here on the right first. Okay, here's a, a function uh, that is dependent on input, an input. D2, uh, all right, so functions, okay, here's a, here's a temperature outside, right, is Okay, so the temperature outside in degrees Fahrenheit at, at 60 degrees outside at 6 a.m. The statement F2, F at 2, 60 degrees has specific meaning within the context. So F2 equals 60 can be interpreted as saying that. two hours after 6 p.m. two hours after after 6 sorry a.m. which is hold on a second all right I'm skipping that first one because it's just confusing all right so here's the gravity equation acceleration due to gravity right um, the first term is the initial height and the second term is how fast something accelerates due to gravity. Okay, so this is a physics student. He drops a ball from 400 feet, uh, and above the this is the function of time uh, of using time um, of how fast it's going to accelerate and how this, the speed's going to be. Okay, find the value of h sub 0. So that's saying, hey, what is the value of h sub 0? So if t, so if if t equals 0, so this is saying, hey, if if t, the, the value, the height, what is the value, what is the value of the height? The value of the height at time 0, at time 0. Okay, so we're going to have a negative, so the output of this is going to be a negative height, right, because the t term is negative, right, because we're at a, we're, we're at, we got a guy here, he's at a building, right, and he's going to drop this ball, right, and this is the initial height, and when he drops the ball, the height is going to get more negative, okay, it's all relative, right. So the output of this, the input is time, and the output is height. And because gravity accelerates this ball, so it's going to progressively get faster and faster and faster and faster, the uh, height of the ball is going to get further and further and further away for each second. You'll see, that's why it's squared. Okay. It's an acceleration question. But anyway, so at time zero, when he initially drops the ball, the height hasn't changed at all. So mathematically, we put a zero in for this t equation. So it's going to be mathematically shown as e f equals 400 minus, excuse me, minus t 16 times, times t squared, right? So it's going to be equal to 400 minus 16 times zero 
squared. And if zero squared is zero, right? So 400 minus zero equals 400. And that is your answer to A, okay? So what does it mean at the context of the problem? It means that um, it's at the height of the building, okay? It's at its origin or original height. Has not had time to fall yet. Has not had time to fall. Okay, now we're going to evaluate the, type, the height at time two. Okay, so it fell a little bit here. This is time one, right? But because this is squared, let's see what happens. Okay, so let's do uh, h sub two. Okay, equals. Um, let's do h sub one, just for just for uh, fun, and then we'll do h sub two over here. H sub two. Okay, equals. Okay, so h sub one would be. 400 minus 16 times t to the first, which is 400 minus, uh, oh sorry, t squared, excuse me, t to the squared, which is 400 minus 16 times t to the first, which is, sorry, 1 to the first, sorry about that, so 16 to the first is 16, just to show you, 16 to the first is 16, so it's going to be 400 minus 16, so 400 minus 16 equals 383, 384 feet from, from the floor. So I said it was going to be negative, it's going to get smaller, zero, okay? So this is 384 feet, so the difference is 16 feet. If this was linear, time 2 would be 32 feet, but it's not. Okay, let's see what time 2 is going to be. All right, so time 2 is going to be 400 minus 16 times 2 squared. Okay, that'd be 1, with one squared, excuse me. One, 16 times 1 squared, which is 1. 1 squared is 1. Sorry about that. Still, same math, math would be the same. So 400 minus 2 squared is 16 times 4. So 16 times 4, 4 is 64. So 400 minus 64 is 336. So 336, right, which is not 16 feet more, it's 64 feet more. See, the change was went from 16 to 64, right? This change here between 384 minus 336 was 48 feet, right? Not 16 feet, it's a lot more, right? That shows that it's exponential. Okay, it's an exponential change, right? So, so this the change from this this was this was one second, right? From here to here was the change from here to here was one second because this was one second, and this was two sec this was one second and this was two seconds. The change from here to here is only one second. This is one second. This was two seconds. The difference between one second and two seconds is one second, right? But this second because it's accelerating, it's still this stain was 48 feet. This was only 16 feet because it's traveling faster from here to here because it accelerated. All right. So anyway, that's pretty cool. That's acceleration. It means it's, it's, it's going faster. So interpret the meaning of H2 based upon that. Right. Oh, sorry. This was 336. 336 feet. So interpret the, uh, the meaning of H2 based upon its it says it's uh, 336 feet, 336 feet above the ground and accelerating. OK, 
Okay, Joe asked to interpret the value of H3. Is, okay, so H3 is interpreting the value of reasonable with the context of this situation. Well, let's see what happens if I do 16 to the negative 3. 16 to the negative 3. Does it make sense to evaluate something at a negative 3, at a time of negative 3? Well, no. No, it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. That does, does not make sense because SEN, uh, SEN, do, 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 do. SEN, SE, I'll just do it like that. Anyway, it does not make sense because uh, he didn't drop the ball before time zero. Drop ball before time zero. Right, so um, if you didn't drop the ball before time zero, then there's no useful data. Therefore, no useful data. Okay, next it asks us finally to draw a curve of the graph. Well, actually, no, it says the graph is on this coordinate grid here. Okay, the graph is on this coordinate grid right here. And it says, uh, based upon the graph here, um, this, based upon the context of the x-axis right here, this represents the ground, right? The x-axis, I'm sorry, represents the time. This is the time. And this represents the height. Okay, All right, so this is the height, this is the time, and this is the height. This would be negative time. All right, so this is the ball's, this is the ball's height. And you can see here, right, from this time to this time, the height went from here to here, from here to here. Right. This was this one second. That's the change in one second, and then it, from the change one second to here, it, it changed by this much. And then on this side it changed by this much. All right, this was the change in one second. Okay. <coughs> what will the height of the ball be when it hits the ground? Well, zero, obviously. Circle the point where the ball hits the ground. Well, that's five seconds right there. That's pretty easy. Zero feet. Units matter. Units matter. Circle the ball where it's ground, right there. Write the point where the ball hits the ground in functional notation. In functional notation. So F sub H sub five equals zero. That's where the ball hits the ground. So how long did it take the ball hit the ground after it was released? Well, five seconds. Five seconds. All right, and then so discuss with the partner at with the partner at h of 1.4 at 1.1.8 well, is less than means what terms? Okay, well this means that the height of the ball at 1.8 seconds is greater than the height of the ball at 3.4 seconds. Well, that makes sense, right? The height of the ball at 1.8 seconds is greater than the height of the ball at 3.4 seconds. Right? That's because it hasn't got, hadn't had time to travel further, right? No, like toward the ground. Okay, that's what that means. So the height of the ball, 1.8, height of ball at 1.8 seconds is greater than height of ball. Three point four seconds. Okay, so that's that's what means going on right here. Okay, so uh, hopefully that helps.
with this lesson. Um, there's some more guided practice and stuff going on that you guys can try. If you miss this, um, we are going to uh, move on to the next lesson from here.